Welcome to The Outcast, the podcast from Outlaw Pro, the ultimate angling experience. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is it. The next instalment of The Outcast, the podcast from Outlaw Pro. And believe me when I say this one is going to be an incredibly special one. I've got two people with me that are good pals of mine. We have a common interest and there is no question in my mind that you will already know one of them. You might not know the other one yet, but believe me, you will by the end of this. Without further ado, let's just introduce them. We have Mark Billy Billingham and Gary Badger Stockton. Um, you've got to have nicknames in the army, haven't you? You're both ex-servicemen, and you've got to have a nickname. You have hundreds, mate. Mine went straight down to Billy Short for Billingham, of course. I'd never have worked that one out, mate. But, but I'll tell you what, mate. One of the funniest ones I do remember is when I went out to Belize. Yeah. The main beer out there is called Bellican. So I used to be called Bellican Beer. <laughs> Quality, <laughs> uh, quality, and and badger. Obviously, I can see it now, but that's been around for a while. Isn't yeah, it? My, mine stems from my, my childhood. When I was four, I had um, appendicitis, and I was told I had thirty minutes to live. On the back of my head, I've got a brown birthmark. So when I had my appendix out, that brown birthmark turned grey overnight. So I had black jet black hair, grey patch in the back of my head. Uh, my first day in basic training, um, Nucky Nyokus was my instructor. And he gave me the choice. He said, we don't have punks in the army. You can have the choice of uh, badger or skunk. <laughs> <laughs> and that's goes badger. Definitely. That, I think that was a good choice. That was, that was a brilliant choice. Um, you've heard me saying that, that both of these lads have had long and illustrious army careers. Uh, Billy, yours is very well documented. So just mm -hmm. you're in a much better position to tell our wonderful viewers what you do and what you've done. Fire away. If yeah, you're I mean... Pun. I joined the army at 17, tried to join at 16, but reasons why doesn't really matter. But I joined at 17, joined the parachute regiment um, in 1983. And then I joined three para after finishing training in 1984, beginning of 84, which was straight into a jungle course in Belize. I stayed with three para for just over nine years. Uh, the last two of those years, I was back in the depot as an instructor. And it was at that point then when I decided to go to where I wanted to go next, which was to 2-2 to, to SES. I did selection in 1 of 92, um, one of 283 of us. I was one of the seven that passed. I uh, went to B Squadron Mountain Troop. I've been, when you finish selection, I was asked where I wanted to go. I wanted to go to Air Troop D Squadron because I'd parachuted before. <laughs> But they sent, to, sent me to Mountain Troop B Squadron. I never climbed anything but <laughs> stairs. So this was all new. <laughs> I stayed with B Squadron um, all my time for the career, uh, my career through the regiment, uh, where I ended up as a squadron sergeant major. Altogether, I did, I say, 17, 18 years, so 27 years altogether in the military. Um, had an amazing career, did everything I wanted to do. Everything from, you know, indicting people for war crimes to hostage release, and including... Um, being the ground commander on the London bombings. Um, wonderful career. After that, left, and the only job I could get was security. I was fortunate or unfortunate, however you want to look at it, to become uh, head of security for A-list celebrities, Angelina Jolie, Brad Pitt. So I did that for a while, celebrity bodyguarding, then went into, I had my own business, security business running in Iraq. I did a little bit of that, then went back to instead of being one side of the camera to the other side of the camera where I end up on a TV show called SAS Who Dares Wins and that's where I am today. Yeah. Mr. Mr. Telly, Mr. SAS <laughs> Telly now. Um, you, you touched very briefly there yeah. on um, being a celebrity bodyguard and I, like, I've read your book. It's yeah. just, it's fantastic. Like some of the stories, but I particularly love the Tom Cruise story. Oh, yeah. So now there may be people out here that for some reason haven't read the book. I've got no idea why not. You should go out and get it because trust me, it's brilliant. But just talk to us about the, uh, the, the Tom Cruise story in the door. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So this particular story you, you're alluding to is um, I'll get the usual call. Can you be in a certain place, which I am to be Rome, to meet Tom? He's coming in for a long weekend. Um, he just wants to chill out below the uh, radar. Doesn't want anybody to know he's there. Uh, just keep a low profile. Just do his security as normal. Yeah, no problem at all. So I get the call. Fly into uh, Rome. Did as much of the recce as as I could. Normally, as Basil tell you, you get 24 hours or so to get all your recce's done. I didn't have that. I had about six hours. So I did the main thing: the airport, 
check it because it was a private airport, make sure I knew what get in and out. Hotel, make sure I knew where his room was, in and out, all that sort of stuff. But the problem with this, the hotel only had one way in, one way out. And it was those rotating doors, which I hate anyway. So at first I knew that was a problem. But when I got to the hotel, like I say, it's supposed to be totally off the radar. No one needs to know he's coming. I get to the hotel to do the record. There's about 100 people hanging around, cameras. I knew they were paparazzi, of course. So I sniffed around, did my own thing. But I also knew this, this place got used by many celebrities. So out of, out of interest, just before I left to go back to the airport, I said to this one guy, Italian guy, paparazzi who spoke English. I says, uh, what's going on? He went, oh, Tom Cruise is coming. I was like, oh, jeez, you're joking. How does he know? Anyway, I said, oh, interesting. I said, um, how do you know that? He goes, oh, we all know. That's why we're all here. We're going to get... I says, okay. So I was kind of thinking on my feet, knowing that I was the only one with him, I've got to deal with this. So I said to the guys, well, you know what, mate? He's not coming. He says, how do you know? I says, because I'm his bodyguard. He went, oh. What do you mean he's not coming? I said, he's not coming because you'll just ask us. However, I knew full well that he was coming. We had to go there. So I'm going to take him somewhere else. And unless, you know, you play the game with us, leave us alone. He says, well, I'll tell you what. If you let us get a couple of pictures, we'll leave you alone. I had no other bartering bar chips. So I thought, okay, that's what we'll do. So I'm now heading to the airport thinking, oh, I've got to tell him, Tom, you know, that the paparazzi know he's here. He's going to be well peed off, like, you know. So I get to the airport, I meet him, the old greetings chat, get in the car, says, I'm sorry, mate, but they all know you're here. And he was, he, he was a little bit, oh, I'm trying to keep a low profile. I said, listen, I said, uh, when we get to the hotel, stay on my left hand side, stop for a couple of seconds, let, and they're going to leave us alone. He went, okay, whatever you say. So we now get back to the hotel some two hours later, and I can't even see the front of the hotel. There's probably 300 people, fans and paparazzi. So he's looking at me and in my head, I'm like, oh, geez, how am I going to deal with this? You know, trying to play it cool. So we pull up and I said to the driver, stay here. And when I get out, lock the door. I said to Tom, keep an eye on me. I'll figure this out. So I get out the vehicle, stood against the vehicle and Tom's watching me. I'm watching him. And I'm looking for this bloke I spoke to earlier. And out the blue, there he is, spotting blue T-shirt. I went, let's just for this sake call him pa Pablo. I went, oi, Pablo. I told you, and he looked at me, he went, he shouted something in Italian. Obviously, I had no idea what he said. And it was like the party on the waves. I've never seen anything like it. Everybody just moved left and right of the walkway all the way down to the doors. And I'm like, I'm thinking, wow, this is awesome. Moses yeah, is right. just playing it cool, yeah. But I look at Tom, and Tom looks at me, and he's going, what the? And I'm like, sass, mate. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so he gets out. He gets out, he stands on my left side and we're walking down and everything's cool. People are taking a couple of pictures, shouting and screaming, excitement. No one's approaching us. Now in my head, I'm about two meters from the door and in my head I'm thinking, how are we going to get through this door without looking like a couple of clowns? You know, it's a rotating door. So we stopped just before the entrance and I said, just give them five seconds, let them get the pictures. He goes, yeah, no problem. So he turns around, he's now on my right hand side. All these pictures have been taken. Five seconds done, I thought, right, time to go. Turned round, just about to step in. So it's like a rotating door. I've got one foot inside. He's got one foot inside. He's on my left-hand side. The door's closing in on us. And from the right-hand side, I just see blue. Something running towards me. I haven't got time to turn because we're, we're going to get caught in the door. So I grab him to get control of him. But I grab him around the neck. And then this thing from the right, I grab this thing around the neck, this blue thing. So I've now got two heads under my arm and we're going around this thing, you know, sideways into this doorway. And as we get through into the foyer, these two heads are looking at me, Tom and this person. And he looks at me and goes, Billy, meet my girlfriend, Penelope. <laughs> <laughs> it was Penelope Cruz, which I had no idea. <laughs> Just, what, what, what did he say? How did she react? To Mate, that then? Oh my God, she was horrified. Yeah. Because I mean, I didn't know they were dating. He was on a film called The Last Samurai. He was filming out in New Zealand and he came in for a long weekend, spent some time yeah. with her. Yeah. Um, she'd obviously waited for him to come, yeah. went out, must have paid about $500 to get her hair done and look beautiful as she yeah. does. <laughs> and it's and now, now in your armpit. And now I'm <laughs> stuck under my arm and on my armpit, yeah. And quality. We got in the elevator, I'll never forget, and he's looking over my shoulder. <laughs> he's like shaking I mean, his say, what have you done? He looks actually, you know, I don't know you, but obviously know him. Yeah. He looks quite a decent bloke, actually. You know, what's, what's he like? Mate, he's, he's an awesome bloke, you know. He's, yeah. Everybody has their vision or their, their views of him 
mainly from the media because yeah. not that many people meet him I suppose and the media put you know put him down quite a bit he's got this crazy thing about what he believes in Scientology he's yeah. this he's that which actually Scientology is not a bad thing but regardless of what they think about but what they do is amazing yeah. so you know and they talk he's, he's tight he's not small he's, he's average height he's, yeah. he was quite fit but as a person wonderful bloke yeah. absolutely wonderful mate and I'll tell you something I always say I learned a lot from celebrities, and what I did learn was um, time man time management. <laughs> <laughs> As you found out tonight. <laughs> Sorry, oh, God. Uh, but, but, right? Just to oh, let you know no. what this is about. So, You've got hey, some neck. Oh, listen, in the, in the SAS, you never set patterns. I could have been ambushed today. I, I, I weren't risking walking into an ambush. So I came three hours <laughs> late. Look, the first, Purposely. The, yes. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's time not the management. first time, is it? It's not no. the first time. Do you remember when I first met you? Yeah. Yeah, what happened the first time I met you? You were late. You I beg your pardon. I mean, me and Badger were well on the I beg your hours. pardon. Actually, and that was in my do on my doorstep. <laughs> yeah, everybody that's watching this that knows me will probably think, yeah, you're probably right, because I am normally late. But uh, the first time <laughs> I met him, I don't know, it's going back uh, uh, five, six, well, uh, five odd years ago. We're going out to go fishing, aren't we? That's the yeah. first thing. So we've got an RV point. We've got all of the details down. You were supposed to arrive at eight o'clock. So were you, you broke down. Broke down, yeah. I've got there. That's why we were waiting for you. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't yeah. me. It, no, I was waiting for you. Anyway, okay. five to eight, he'll be here in a minute. I was absolutely terrified. Eight o'clock, not arrived. Ten past eight, not arrived. Bearing in mind, I've not met him before. It's like, right, what time do you call this then? <laughs> And fair do straight away, it was like, I've been here an hour, I've been up the tree watching you driving around the car park. So, <laughs> I was, mate. Yeah, 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 I believe you. Yeah. I believe you. Um, Badger, <laughs> let's talk about yeah. your career. You've been around a bit as well. I've known Badger 20-odd years. Yeah. Um, you are a long-time carp angler anyway, aren't you? Um, Billy's only just started on his angling journey. They're both actually fish, so we went fishing yeah. a few years ago. Um, obviously, uh, I've known you 20-odd years, I think... Um, setting up the carp army carp angling federation wasn't it uh, I've, I've fished, i think it was uh, uh 2000 with dove smells from it was 2000 was it um yeah. blimey it's on even abbey, longer on, than i yeah, thought it on was on uh, abbey lakes um, we won it yes and then we got Flipped free it. we got a free entry into the bcac that was it um yeah that was that, i remember that but how, how do you follow that uh the career wise um, mate well for a start how many years did you do in the army i did 22 years so, i was logistics i had yeah. a few paper cuts have you ever had yeah. a paper cut <laughs> mate, regular <laughs> they uh, they do it don't they <laughs> two so, days light duties mate you yeah get paper cut. Yeah, pe yeah i've had loads of paper cuts so yeah i've done 22 years logistics um yeah. i left in 2009 Went out to Afghan on the yeah. civil circuit. You were doing, you've, you've, you've glossed over that very quickly. We'll touch very briefly, but you've done a various different bits and bobs of support in various different places that you've been anyway. So you might be being a bit humble or a bit quiet on where. Yeah, you've I've been, done a few. I've done a few tours. Um, yeah. And to answer, you, I probably supported you. Yeah, exactly. Logistic wise, I probably sent you a vehicle yeah. spare or something. Was that like a boy band together? Was it? Yeah, so, yeah. yeah I'm a support. Yeah, support act. <laughs> <laughs> it was a roadie. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, I've, yeah. Do, I've, I've spent. Uh, uh, ten of those years with Six Nair Assault Brigade. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think I'm the longest serving crapper in Six Nair Assault Brigade. <laughs> ten years, not done peak up there. Yeah, uh, got the maroon beret. You're obviously uh, good at what you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I took a lot of crap for it, but I, I loved it. I loved every minute of it. Um, and I don't, I don't mean I had a great, I had a great time. Uh, yeah. Reached the rank as uh, W01, same as you. I, I yeah. reckon I could have done your job. I think you could, mate, yeah. and better. Yeah, I reckon. Especially I would logistics. have been on time. Well, yeah. You reckon you could yeah. about running because you were PTI as well at one stage, weren't you? I was a PTI, class yeah. three. I was a PTI as well. So oh, well, don't forget what, about class, what class was you? I can't remember, mate. Oh, there did, we go, when mate. did you do it? 86? I didn't know there was I've a I've done class. mine in 96. Oh, mate, you're, I did you're, it in 86. Ten you're years. slightly older than me, Billy. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I've yeah, done PTI. That was good. Um, I, w I was a fit lad years and years ago. I'm not now, though. But finishing my army career. Yep. Um, done the done the Afghan uh, in a logistics role for a few years. Um, went on to the Olympics, yep. um, the Greenwich Park. Yep. Transport manager went out to Africa, uh, Ghana. Um, then my old uh, brigadier um, Chris Murray phoned me up. He was the vice president of Agility DGS. Uh, he phoned me up, um, and the first words that came out of my mouth was no, because I knew <laughs> what he was asking me to do. Um, and he asked me to go out and be the logistics director for the drawdown of uh, Afghan. Um, yeah, yeah. I did that for two years, um, and I've done numerous things since uh, since leaving Afghan. Yeah. Uh, I've done like you. You've done. You just keep. You, we're drifters, aren't we? 
We yeah. just drift into something mm. that we feel bits, comfortable. Bits and bobs of security, logistics, other odds and sods like that. Now, yeah. we've had a funny story from Billy. And I, I think one of my favourite stories about you is when you when you were asked to do the Manchester Marathon as a stand-in. Oh yeah, uh, uh, so oh, no. we've got to we've got to have that one. Do you know? Yeah, I was I was in I was I was in Northern Ireland. Yeah, um, my uh, staffy uh, and Q man and uh, another sergeant. I think I was a corporal at the time. A PTI. Yeah, um, they'd been training for months there to do the Manchester Marathon. Um, and sadly, one of them had to drop out because of injury. Um, and they just, it, it was just flow passing uh, conversation. Oh, we can't put a three man team in now. Um, and I just popped up. Why? It's a, we ain't got three people. I'll, I'll, I'll do it. That was a, that was on a Thursday or Wednesday. The marathon was on a Sunday. Um, and I said, look, I put you up at my brother's house. We can all go on a, on a full session on the Friday, <laughs> uh, chill on the Saturday, and do the marathon Sunday. Um, so they put me in the team, uh, went on an all day of Friday, uh, went on an all day of Saturday. I didn't stop drinking till three o'clock in the morning. Um, and this is with the marathon the next day? The marathon the next day. Um, so obviously once uh, we're doing all the um, uh, the Vaseline. Um, oh, you need to clarify that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah sorry, uh, sorry Billy. Yeah, yeah, clarify. <laughs> um, Vaseline to rub into your, into your parts so you don't get... Um, yeah, shaved. Uh, ch- shaved, yeah, yeah. Uh, shaved. Shaved, shaved, shaved. Um, but I was the first one to stick my hand in the tub. Yeah. And sadly, though, I left some of my pubic hairs around the... Um, <laughs> Round the, round the tub. So, I know, I know. So no one else used it. Surprise. So, so one of the guys that was running, he he couldn't complete it properly because he was he didn't have the uh, Vaseline on him. Anyway, long story short, I, um, I stopped at the 16 mile point because I hit my brick wall. Went to a cafe, had two sausage, uh, two sausage sandwiches, a can of coke. And a Mars bar, and then <laughs> you're carry- from Manchester, aren't you? So he knew yeah, that just yeah, yeah. off route, there's a cafe in the corner. <laughs> and because so. on uh, everyone that's done a marathon, they give you freebie chocolate as you're yeah. running, and that. And uh, I'm running past with a sausage butt in my hand. <laughs> this guy next to me goes, "Oh, he did the brick wall." He goes, "Are they, are they giving out sausage butties?" I went about a mile back down the <laughs> road, and there. Uh, yeah, that's my marathon story. <laughs> but imagine, imagine it, 17 miles in, hitting the wall, and Badger comes past with the sausage signing, and I'm just I, trotting past him. I tell you what, he'd he, he give me the kick to, you yeah. know, uh, always a little further. Yeah. That's where I got it from. And he still did it, right? Yeah, yeah. still well, did there it. There you go, mate. Yeah. Carrying yeah. extra weight by the sounds of it. Right? Yeah. yeah. Sausage sandwich. That's yeah. a true story. Jelly babies for me. Jelly babies. Good effort, mate. Well, look, f- fantastic military careers, um, both of you. What did it mean to you, Billy, to be a soldier? Everything what was it all meant, about? It meant everything to me. I I had to be, go in the army. I mean, I joined the cadets as a young kid. I was a bit of a rogue. And the cadets showed me discipline and a light that I needed. I, I needed a family group around me. I had a great family, don't get me wrong. I just needed that, I wouldn't say guidance as such, but I just need that, that sort of respect and discipline. And and the cadets gave it me. In and out of getting in and out of trouble, the cadets kept me on the on the train track that I need to be on. And then I just knew, as soon as possible, I wanted to join at sixteen. That's where I want to go. And he and I, I eventually joined at seventeen. One because you know I had a criminal record up till sixteen and two, I got injured, which stopped me going in as a junior. And uh, you know, jo- joining was the best thing I ever did. I had total respect for all the people that I saw training me, and I just f- looked at them and I just thought, this is who I want to be. I want to be somebody that, when they talk about, they talk about good things that I've done. So there's no way I was not going to, f- you know, pass through depot unless I mm. died. <laughs> and two, I just knew I'd stay as long as I possibly can, and it, and it did. It's exactly what I expected it to be, and, and more. It, it was just, it, it was a family. It was a community. It was you literally do know these family of people that are complete strangers initially probably better than your own family you know it really is crazy and that community is everything to us mm. none of us had any money <coughs> nobody joins the army for money yeah. it's a friendship the camaraderie and everybody talks about it what do you miss we all miss the blokes we miss the banter yeah. banter is the best medical um treatment for any soldier any soldier that's got a problem Needs another soldier. Yeah, yeah, that's no, right. No yeah. specialist, and that's and that's part of the reason, uh, people, why why these two are in at the moment. You see, they're both wearing Phoenix Hero shirts. Um, Badger um, has set up Phoenix Heroes. What it was five years ago? Yeah, there. Uh, there. Uh, two thousand eighteen. So, two thousand eighteen. Yeah, so it'll be about five years ago. Um, and and Phoenix Heroes basically is a is a, a 
well, I was going to explain what it is. I've got the I've got the boss here. Why don't you explain what it is? Yeah, sure. We're um, a non-profit community interest company supporting veterans, predominantly focused on mental health, well-being, um, and a different range of services. Um, one of the things that we've uh, it takes a bit of time when you when you're setting up a community interest company, trying to find your your feet of, of what you're actually good at. It, take, it does take a bit of time, and mm. we found um, going forward that building communities is our strong point, and we've done that. 100%. We've done that through the veteran carp angling uh, community. We've got hundreds of veterans now all around the UK. Um, we were about to launch our uh, veterans football. Uh, we got our first uh, game, uh, Crowborough um, Athletic FC in May. Um, so, yeah, building the community side is uh, brilliant for us because what, what we found is once you've built that community, blokes and the girls will openly talk with each other. Mm. And then what me and, and Sue do... Um, generally because we attend all the events it's kind of um we watch people we we have brews with everyone we get to know them and then the trust barrier the trust um boundaries are, are, are pretty much um dead straightforward where the the guys and girls are coming to us saying you know something that i need support with this so they're openly coming to us so once you've built once you've got that community built um our community uh, specifically they're in um daily contact with each other yeah um, they fish um, with each other at the weekends. Then we do our events. We've got, I think it's 30 events this year. Um, our uh, club coordinators um, uh, and captains are organising their own events. So we're just expanding, um, you know, year on year. We've, we've seen a, a, a big uh, growth. It's, it's a ladder of growth as well, isn't it? That, that people can come to you effectively um, needing support, can get that support, can get themselves pointing in the right direction motoring on a little bit and then what they do is they offer that support to to people that are where they were previously yeah so as a result it's snowballing cyclical benefiting absolutely everybody yeah the peer the peer support side of it is so strong it's unbelievable mm. um and without realizing it we're, we're actually taking the pressure off the nhs mm. um you keep a balanced community then sometimes there's no reason to go to that next level to to reach out for the support because they feel they feel comfortable w- yeah. where they are, and that, that's what we're experiencing. Well, um, let's, let's let's touch on the NHS now because you know this is quite an emotive issue. The NHS clearly is is under an awful lot of pressure everywhere. And forgive yeah. me for getting a little bit political about this, but I've I've, I've seen this from a number of different sites that <clears throat> when you're in the army, you get an awful lot of support, and leaving the army effectively is the end of a very long and you know enjoyable career for the majority of people that have been in it you two are prime examples you've both served 20 years plus it must be a huge transition leaving that behind going into something else you know i don't know a soldier that has had an easy ride out into something else that is such a change in life well the the reason we have so many problems with ex-soldiers you know ptsd PTSD generally is happens to soldiers after they leave the military. There's very few in the military that get it or they've got it. It don't manifest itself till really it's manageable when they leave. while you're in. Yeah, but it. Yeah. But the reason being is it's it's that it's that camaraderie, that community, and what the military gives you gives you. You don't really realise I did until I left was basically everything. You know, from a bed mm. to your food to your med. I knew exactly where to go to the dentist, and the biggest daunting thing in my life when I left was standing on my own two feet yeah. literally you know I, I didn't know where to go to the dentist I thought well I know where, de- where the dentists are but there's a big procedure on the outside world mm-hmm. not like in the military that you used to and I remember going to the dentist and going standing in a queue and I was like what standing in a queue what are you talking about so I did I get to the front of the queue and she goes okay you're right it's going to cost you this amount of money for all right then it was like this is like January she says yeah okay you've got an appointment now for the 4th of March I went what are you talking about <laughs> I've got the toothache, I want to see it. Oh, no, 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 you have to wait. So you take a lot for granted in the military, you know, it's all there for you. And then when a soldier comes out, mm-hmm. they lose that security of having friends that take the yeah. out of them, which helps them, yeah. believe it or not. You you lose the, the trust and the loyalty of the friends you've got around you because you don't really know anybody. And then you've really got to rebuild your whole life again. And and it's all these little things that you've, you have taken for granted that it... it, it you know, it all piles. It's a lot of pressure on top of you. You've got to have a proper job. You've got to earn money. You've you got become to become lost, don't you? Some, totally you, lost, man. Uh, I was you lost. Can, you can drift from one thing to another for, for years until you find your, your comfort zone again. And it takes some time. Um, it really does take time. You know, there's uh, there's there's a six month transitional period, and you would think six months actually is is quite a long time, but it goes so quickly. That six month period from the time that you you know the the, the dreaded date that you're out. Mm. 
is oh it goes it is, goes is, so that fast. last six months goes in, in my, no my, my, real, my real settlement yep. was I went on TV with a restaurant with Raymond Blanc for four weeks yeah um He's a proper name dropper. Well, Notice. No, Raymond. He's a I, I what, he just turns. He just gets everywhere, doesn't he? He's like Raymond. <laughs> Three pans. <laughs> yeah. he, he is actually a good bloke. Yeah, uh, I know. Me, <laughs> me and Ray Mondo get on really well. Yeah. Uh, Have you fished with him yet? He's a very. He's a, he's a very keen fly yeah. angler. Is he? So, yeah, yeah. Very, well, maybe, very maybe we can get him out fishing. That'd I was at nice. Marco Pierre White's actually on Sunday. I seen you. I seen you. <laughs> Yeah, I've seen a name drop. I'll see your Raymond Blanc arranging yeah. with Marco Piero. Yeah, sorry, but yeah, go on. He's, um, so so my, my transition was a bit disjointed because straight from there, I went out to Afghan in a, in a civvy job. Yeah. And leaving as a W1, all my blokes who, who uh, you know, worked for me were out in Afghan. So I, I didn't think I left the, the mob. Yeah. I was getting paid more money as a civvy. Yeah. And then that's when, my, that's when I started looking within to how disjointed the, the, the military can be sometimes and, and it, can, it can be a bit disjointed so, to, to me it's also the support uh, you know that, that happens when you when you come out what, what do you think of government support afterwards <coughs> you know you're shaking your head there Billy there ain't no support I, I don't know if it's changed now in today but when I left nothing there was nothing you know all the hospitals were closing down for a start you know I remember when we were in you, you had every town had its own hospital you know which was great People did speech, but then then you left. It was like nothing at all. Yeah. But know? the army covenant is that don't worry, we'll look after you as soon as you're out. We'll, everything will be absolutely fine. Is that? Do you, are you saying that that practically doesn't happen? Didn't happen to me. That's for sure. I don't think it's something most people I talk to. It didn't happen to. I'm I'm only going to speak on my behalf of that. No, I'd, I'd get it. And to honest, I'm I'm from the same era yeah. and the same background, and, and I agree. When I, when I got out, I, I, I was lost. I, I didn't know. I didn't know what um, organisation you could you could go to. From my experiences now, um, there there is a lot of organisation out there that can help. Yeah. Uh, honestly, and that's through the experience mm -hmm. I've had f from our guys and girls, me signposting them to the larger organisations that have got the resources to to do what's needed. Um, y you know, th there is some big organisation out there. The problem is, the guys and girls don't know about it. Yeah. Um, you know, they, they'll put into Google whatever form of help they need and it, there's that many support organisations out there it can bam it's bamboozling you don't really know which one to go yeah. to uh, and it can be very confusing and the, the other thing is um, if normally and this is my experience as well it's the partners that give th uh, their partners a kick up the backside yeah, right. so you need to yeah. you need to get some help now yeah. and when that person goes to get help uh, the first part of contact is, is make a um, uh, from one of the organisations or the larger ones and the, the first thing they'll say is have you have you been referred by a GP have you been to your GP no I haven't well sorry you're going to have to uh, go to your GP to to be referred so that bloke or, or girl has spent 10 days um, worrying about that phone call they've made it to be told actually you've got to make another phone call and 9 times out of 10 they'll just, mm. they'll just give up on it and say yeah. I'm, not, I'm not following this yeah. process it's too difficult I'm not going to knock GPs here because obviously uh, almost mm. every element of the NHS seems to be under quite a lot of a lot of stress at the moment. Yeah. Um, but you know how familiar are your average high street GPs with the issues that that soldiers are suffering? There's a scheme out there that's been rolled out, and it's um, I believe it's taking traction now, where GPs are signing to be veteran friendly. Yeah. Where they they the, the you know the the, the tweak there um, like the first the first question they ask. When a patient comes in, have you ever served in the armed forces? Yeah, yeah. yeah that, that's then, good. that then triggers, yeah. you know, the next support phase. What can be um, brought in to support that individual? Sadly, not all GPs are, are doing it, but it, it, you know, it's been going now for so, some time, and and the feedback I'm getting, it's kind of, it's kind of working. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. The, the the councils that, uh, as well. The the majority of councils are armed forces covenant. Yeah. Um, I've just worked with um, the Colchester Council, their Armed Forces Covenant Gold, um, which are, um, they're doing a real good job. That's one of the questions they ask. Um, have you ever served in the Armed Forces? So asking that question, and they've changed it from are, are you a veteran to have you served in the Armed Forces? Because not a lot of people will associate themselves with being a veteran because yeah. they think it's a, you've got to do 20 years. in yeah. um, So for the younger guys that have only served a short period of time they won't class themselves as being a veteran yeah, yeah. so they've flipped it now to have you seen the armed forces so uh, yeah the, G the GP yeah. think it, 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 
let's let's uh, let's look at let's look at Phoenix and also groups like that as well though because things things like that they 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 might seem relatively low key but they have a huge impact again because of that peer to peer support. Um, we're involved in fishing obviously at Phoenix. That's mm. one of the key reasons yeah. to bring people together. And fishing is uh, used very much as a rehabilitation tool for a number of issues, whether it's kids that have got uh, attention deficit disorders or um, people suffering from PTSD, it's a concentration issue, it's a confidence building thing. You know, it's such a good opportunity for people to get together. You know, you, you hadn't fished before. You'd had a go when you were a kid, but you hadn't fished before. You yeah. come up with me on a river. Lovely. Mate, it's great. It? It's therapeutic. It really is. You're outdoors, fresh air. Bit of banter. In nature, yeah. a bit of fun. And a, and, and a, a skill. Yeah. There's a skill yeah, to yeah, which yeah. You, you don't realise, you know. So you're learning something new. So you're keeping your mind active. You're yes. keeping yourself active. You know, and it, 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 it was brilliant. It was absolutely it's a brilliant. It's look forward to it as well, isn't it? So if you say, I'm yeah. going fishing Saturday, yeah. all week you're thinking, I'm going fishing Saturday, yeah. and, it, and it, it keeps you going. Um, yeah. yeah. Stops you going to work. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So let's talk mindset as well. Alf, yeah. your dog, bless it. Yeah. Um, it's called Alf. Absolutely. Always a little further. Yeah. Whenever you're putting your hashtags out, always a little further. Tell us about always a little further. Obviously, um, not SAS motto, but a mantra, no. I think, from, uh, yeah. from training there. Well, no, the mantra started years and years ago when I was a little bit of a kid. I had a little gang. I, st I used to steal hats, and an old yeah. man stole his hat, ran away. Guy chased me, caught me, and it, this is very true. And, he, you know, rather than give me a good idea, he says, come to my boxing gym. Yeah. And for whatever reason, I went, you know, and I always talk about this because, you know, I was nine years old at the time, a nine-year-old going to meet an old man at the back of a pub in February in the dark who runs a boxing club. I went and did it. And the old man took me in there, you know, and luckily it was a proper boxing club. Mm. I say a proper boxing club. It wasn't. It was, it was uh, what they call booth boxing. It was yeah, illegal, yeah, but he was yeah. doing, the, in his mind, the right thing, which was the right thing. Yeah teaching these kids how to box and he, he taught, me, taught me a few little bits and pieces of boxing and he literally took me to a side and said look I want to tell you about boxing boxing is a um, poor man's game of chess and I remember it as clear as I'm talking to you right now and he said it's about thinking it's about anticipating the next move mm. it's about always being one step ahead of, of, of whatever's in front of you your opponent he said and he said to me he goes you'll win a fight boxing he said with your um with your mind, not with your feet. Sorry, with your feet. Yeah. And your hands will come in later. It's about, you know, thinking and anticipating. And he says, it's about when the chips are down, which there will be, because you know, all fights are going to be different. He said, it's about going always a little further. And that's what he said to me. And I never thought, and I thought, well, okay, he means just keep going just till you, till you can't go no more. I jump forward 20 years, I get to the regiment, and in the middle of the, the, um, the camp in Hereford, at the SAS camp, is a clock tower. And there's an old saying in the regiment, you have to beat the clock. Yeah. And what that means is if you don't beat the clock, it means you're dead. You've been killed in action, probably. And your name goes on that clock. And we, of course, we all go there, pay homage to it. You know, it's, it's, it's a massive thing to us. We go and have a look at it, because there's friends on there, of course, unfortunately. And you read it, and they collect right at the very bottom. The very last word is always a little further. Yeah. So I'm stood on that square, on, on that steps of that, where the clock is, reading that that day and thinking, wow. Yeah. How yeah. ironic is that? You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's twenty fate, years isn't as a young, it? yeah, yeah. yeah. The, that that message to me, and I carry that message from that old man all the way through my life, and and even more so to today. And that's yeah. why I use it. Well, you still train a lot. You're obviously only uh, you're thirty six years old now. I think thirty seven. Thirty seven now is it? Uh, yeah, we're similar ages. <laughs> Fifty seven. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know, you, you you obviously still look after yourself. Fitness yeah. is a huge part of your life. Um, we talk about this all the time, actually. That that fella there that's that's on that picture with his his back to the lake. Yeah. Um, he's ex para. Uh, that's Dave Levy, very very good angler. Uh, you you may or may not know him, or um, obviously you can't see too much of his face from there. Um, but again, another lad, similar age to us, yeah. keeps himself in shape. Being physically fit and also um, mentally sharp all the yeah. time, it just it just makes... Well, I think, to, to me, being active just leads you to a good mindset to start off with. And then anybody that's struggling, the first thing really they need to do is just move. And if yeah. you move, then your mind will move. Yeah. And if you stagnate physically and you stop, then that's when your mind will will struggle as well yeah and there's no template to that because people say oh do something physical people I don't know what, for whatever reason go, oh, that means you've got to go and start running marathons it? No. no it doesn't yeah. just move yeah, walking yeah. Yeah. getting out walking hill yeah. walking yeah. anything yeah. walk so, to the shops 
that, that the physical side of it then you know kickstarts your mind and yeah. it really does and that, whether that is a walk whether it's a run it's yeah. like people say to me oh well you, you you fit you do this who wants to challenge I don't want to challenge anybody I challenge myself and that's what I'd say yeah. to anybody when people send me messages going well I'm in a wheelchair I get that but there is still stuff you can do you can yeah. use your arms you can do something else that, that's what I'm talking about do something yeah and yeah. it sets you up for the rest of the day you know I, I, I always do my my things very routine I have to do it first thing in the morning because yep. it sets me up great and then you know and then i'm good to go for the rest of the day and, and again that always a little further kicks in as i'm doing my fitness i'll say to myself i'm gonna run five miles yeah. four miles into it the devil on this side is going yeah. make it six yeah and then the yeah. angel goes <laughs> yeah go six yeah. and so that's my always a little further does it, it mind it, saying you've done four that's not a bad run so far <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, but again it's like no you can shut up because i'm going the five yeah but, yeah but it is it, it's, it's really important you know to physically do something get so, out of bed uh, again, you know, you've been you've been in some pretty sticky situations. Yeah. You know, the, the we we light at the end of the tunnel is is something that anybody that's having a difficult time or or struggling might be looking for. You all have been in situations where the light at the end of the tunnel seems miles away, and there's only one percent of it showing, mm -hmm. but it's there, yeah, isn't it? And and the very fact that you're here means that you've reached yeah. that light. Well, you know, you're in a dark situation and it's because something has happened. Mm. It's all, the fact is it's happened already. You can't change that. Yeah. But if you're still in it, the quicker you do something about it, the quicker it's going to end. Yeah. You know, and it's, it, except one thing. One, you're in a problem. Yeah. So accept it. You're in it. Don't try and hide it and sweep it under the carpet because it just gets bigger. Mm. So accept this ain't good. This is difficult. Accept it's going to be hard. And also accept the only person that can really do something about it is you. Because yeah. you're the only one that knows what's really going on in your head. Yeah. Next thing to accept is there's people around you care mm. and love you. People have always said to me, oh, you must have so much courage. I'll tell you, the biggest courage is asking for help. Yeah. Asking for help, not pretending and sweeping and going, oh, I don't want people to think about my image. Forget your image. Yeah. Think about your well-being and think about people around you. Because when you're suffering, people around you are suffering, especially yeah. people who love you. Yeah. You know, so it's important. And that's where the community, uh, I've seen it firsthand where... Uh, people on the side of a lake yeah. within an hour they know each other everything yeah. about each other because they openly just yeah. chat and then I get I get guys come up to me go oh all day oh Tom needs a bit of help you know I yeah. said yeah I know I get it and that's how it works just talking yeah. uh, just be you know free, yeah. free just, to just to add on that there's two things they just come to my mind actually you're right you sit on the riverbank and you, you're thinking but you're thinking about obviously what you're doing, but you, you also, this is the time when everything's laid out in front of you. You start thinking yeah. about what you care about, what you worry about, and there's another time you do that, and you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. You could be in the woods, you know, working away, and if, as long as tactically, you light a little fire, everybody just stares at the fire. Yeah. And everybody's doing exactly the same as you do yeah, on the yeah. riverbank. Yeah. You're thinking. Yeah. yeah. You, yeah. You, you, you're relaxing. You're going, well, I've got to tackle that problem. How do I tackle that problem? Mm. And it's amazing, yeah. and that's we, the we beauty have the, of We have the Phoenix fire pit on yeah. our events. So amazing. you've got double, yeah, yeah. double well, and, whammy there. And we do. When we get that out, amazing. it's get everyone yeah. round it. It's it's brilliant. Yeah. The, one, of the, one of the great things about fishing is that it can be whatever you want it to be. So, you know, if you decide that you need a little bit of me time and you want to sit on your own mm. in the middle of nowhere, then actually it gives you a reason to do that. Because if yeah. it's like, I need a bit of me time and you go and sit on your own in a field... You know, sometimes yeah. you need that extra bit of motivation for, for doing it. And the fact that you're going fishing, actually, it's the vehicle to allow you to sit there and get your own mind time. Equally, if you decide the opposite end of the scale that you want it to be a real social thing and you want all your mates around, you're going to have some banter, we'll have a bit of competition, we'll have yeah. a bit of fun. You know, it can be that as well. Yeah. And it can be any single thing yeah. in between that, which is which is why it works so well. Um, you dropped um, uh, Raymond Blanc in earlier. I'm going to drop uh, Barry Hearn in now because I was talking to Barry Hearn about fishing. Now, Barry Hearn is incredibly successful and he's told me that he has had some of his very, very best ideas when he's been fishing, you know, and some yeah. of some of his best boxing signings, some of the best things that he's done through Matchroom, the idea has come to him when he's been sat there and everything's blanked out and he's just... He's fishing. Because you've got no distractions. Exactly. You've got time to think. and Because, yeah. you know, you, you, you say, oh, yeah, get a bit of time and, you know, you'll be at home, you, you sit in your quiet room, but the phone rings, the TV's on, something's happening. Yeah, distraction. Somebody's talking in the back. There, there's noise. Yeah. There's a distraction. At, on the bank, the, there's the sound of the wind blowing through the trees. Yeah. 
the, the, a little bit of the water yeah. splash and that's actually nice isn't it it's, yeah. that's, oh, that's, it's, it's a good feeling yeah and, and it gives you that relaxing time to let your mind drift and yeah. think about what you want yeah. and you've got the adrenaline there's always that thing that actually I might get a bite any minute yeah. so there's the, the anticipation excitement. you're actually doing something yeah. So, yeah, it's, uh, but like you said there's so many levels of fishing it yeah. can be just that on your own chilled out it can be you and your mate a bit of a competition yeah. it can be physical yeah, mm. getting in and out of the oh, you know you're fly fishing and you're in and out you're constantly on the move it's, it's, it offers yeah. every layer of whatever you want to do I, I tell you what sorry I reckon you should come and meet some of the England lads because we, I'd love we, to. when we went to um, when we went to South Africa we had the World Games in South Africa in yeah. 2019 and uh, it's fair to say that as anglers there's a lot of us that aren't perhaps quite in the shape that we could be in um, now we, we fish a 72 hour event so you're fishing pairs yeah. and you've you sleep but you don't sleep much you're literally like right so you two are paired together so what we'll do is you'll get two hours I don't want to be with him <laughs> <laughs> you'll, you'll have two hours kip I'll turn up late <laughs> <laughs> you'll, have, you'll have two hours kip then you'll be up together for an hour and yeah. then you'll have yeah. two hours kip so you've got the hour crossover so you know exactly what's it's going like on statue, yeah. Yeah. and it is exactly that so you know I've, I've run yeah. it on that very basis and if you look at the guys now, when we, we flew over to South Africa, everybody's in kit. We had a yeah. number of people come up and say, are you going to play rugby in the England rugby team? Because they're all big, strong lads. So I reckon we should get you along and you should uh, you should meet some of the England lads. You come and have a word yeah. with our boys, talk about mental mindset and everything like that. And yeah. what we'll do is we'll see if you're fit enough to keep up with some of our lads doing some I'll of the things challenge, that they do. So we'll, have a, do we'll have a go. We did ask, um, we yeah. asked Eddie Hearn. He was going to come at one stage. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. So if, I'd love to come along. Because, you know, just, it's, it's quite surprising. You're talking about the physicality of fishing. Yeah. You know, it, the, the movement is very similar to a javelin when you're looking at a long range cast and some of the lads can cast over 200 meters which is you know it's a huge cast i can't do it anymore i'm 160 and i'm out uh, but some of the guys there you know it's, it's hugely yeah. physical um so it can be that exercise thing as well but uh, yeah we'll have to there we'll are have there's to just play. so many layers to it and, it and whatever you want and you yes. can have all all layers in one we day we can play hide and seek can we? <laughs> <laughs> it could be that annoying person who's just so it hasn't got the patience <laughs> keeps throwing stones in the water and <laughs> f***ing you off who's next to it <laughs> that's the person walking past with the dog and the stick and everything um, Billy you, are, you really are sort of the, the man of the moment you know I, I follow you anyway because I know you but wherever I look you, you there's, there's feeds coming in what an exciting life you know, if you <laughs> fell off your perch, yeah. and you now don't do it now, please. But you know, when you just look back at, at what you've achieved, yeah. I, I saw something the other day that if if the twelve year old you, if you could write a letter to your twelve year old you now, telling them what you've done through the course of your life, what do you think the twelve year old or the sixteen year old you would think? You know, it, it's amazing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Like, you know. Would you have ever thought that you would be where you are now? No. I mean, you're just cracking America. It's fair to say yeah, yeah, that yeah. you are cracking America. Yeah. It's not a case of you're in America. They no, love it. Yeah, it's 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 growing arms and legs now. It's really yeah. growing. Yeah, this whole world is expanding in you know where I'm going with what I'm doing. Looking back at it, I've, no way would I ever expect to be anywhere where I am now. You know, I left school at the age of 13. I got yeah. thrown out of school. I had no education. Yeah. I was a... Ed Boy, Games Captain and Prefect. Yeah, I can imagine that. Yeah. I can imagine that. I was. Yeah. <laughs> Were you really? Yeah, I, can, yeah, yeah. I can see that. I can <laughs> see that, yeah. Turns up on time. Wearing yeah, the right yeah. yeah. I was. Yeah. No, yeah. I, was, I was rogue, mate. You know, the best I could have done really was to get into the army. At least yeah. I knew I was going to be safe-ish. Yeah. Get a wage of some sort. And it just went on from there. And it, I think it's just that trusting yourself, believing yourself. I'll tell you what it is. It's, I ain't afraid to fail. Yeah. I know people talk about this quite a bit now, but I ain't. I don't care if I don't mm. get my goal, but I'm going to go for it. Yeah. And I ain't disrespectful to people who, you know, some people will say to you, Billy, you probably won't get that. You haven't quite got this or this. I, go, I hear what you're saying, but I am going to try. Yeah. You know, so the fact that I've tried for it, and he's right, or she's right, I didn't get it. Yeah. But you know what? I'm not far forward of where I was before and all these new avenues have opened up for see, me and that's what's happened for me. I see that in a similar way, you know, sorry to bring it back to, to angling, no. but there's going to be a lot of anglers that are watching this. That's our, that's our key target yeah. audience as well. So, you know, people might be thinking about where they're going fishing and late and think, oh, it's a bit hard for me or I can't do that. I think one of the things is when you step up to a challenge, yeah. um, if, if you fail at that challenge like I don't like failing I'm, no, I'm, I'm hugely competitive no one does I learn so much from yeah. it and what you then do is it gives you it gives you the choice to look at what you're weaker at yeah. and decide whether you're shelving it 
or whether you want to improve in that area and dedicate some of your life's energy to be able to make yeah. yourself better in that area or whether you think you know what it's not for me i'll i'll put that energy elsewhere because you know we a lot of us prevaricate and we waste time doing things that, mm -hmm. that we shouldn't do you know social media is a prime <clears> example and i'm not saying don't do it because it's great but but we can waste so much time mm. doing something that doesn't really benefit us when we could put our energy doing something that yeah. good even failing failing as you just alluded to you benefit from it yeah. but you've got to be smart enough and sensible enough to say you know what i ain't gonna do that don't keep yeah. waiting because yeah. what i always say is it's okay to fail failing is you know it is what it is it's it becomes more than failing it becomes a problem yeah when you keep repeating it yeah do you know what i mean yeah. so get out there don't be scared to be knocked on your ass go okay i'm gonna learn from that I'll get up or you can exactly you make a decision i'm gonna try that again with i know why i failed it yeah. i'm gonna work on that then go again or you just go you know what i ain't gonna go again i've tried it i know i'm not gonna get to it move on to something else but take the lessons you learn yeah from that failure you know and people the problem is today i think the key thing i keep saying is is it's the truth we don't mm. tell the truth we're scared yeah. to tell the and truth and that's where your buddies come in because they'll tell you the truth yeah. yeah and sometimes it's hard listening to it yeah yeah uh, but your buddies will yeah. be straight with you and say yeah. look it can be good sage advice can't it yeah, yeah, you just ain't good enough yeah. and there's, yeah. there's nothing wrong with that yeah yeah but just don't do that some, do something else it's not, you're not good enough in life you're just yeah. not good enough for that do something yeah, no, else. none of us are the same mm. you know we, you know when they talked about back in school oh we can't have winners and losers i mean what a load of nonsense yeah sorry nonsense yeah you know i, I remember the guy sat next to me in the time i did spend at school he was a big lad can i say fat he was fat he was useless at sports i was great at sports i'll tell you something right now i know where he is right now he's making 15 times more money than i am because he was good at something else yeah. and good luck to the guy and i'm doing what i do and as long as you all accept that you can't be great at ever, everything mm. you'll do fine you take it on the chin be yeah. prepared to fail be prepared to get back you up are, and go again like you failed earlier on didn't you yeah on the timing <laughs> no you failed because you had no idea when i was going to turn up <laughs> where are you billy <laughs> so you were laying in you were laying in the ambush for two hours you got fed up and you walked back in the shop and then i appeared yeah so you got yeah, ambush it was, me. yeah it was it was that but we had got a tracker on you so we know where you were so, <laughs> i'm glad you did because yeah. i didn't but the thing <laughs> is what's funny about billy is you, I've got it on my on my phone. You try to give me an excuse. I know. I'm like, why? why you, you went you, you went into happened. excuse mode yeah. about something, and, and then went, I was well, drifting. I'm sorry, but I, and you and you just started laughing. And they didn't started you? laughing, yeah, because yeah, you yeah, knew you were digging yeah. yourself. Well, yeah, because like, why am I bothering? Yeah, yeah. Why am I bothering? He knows. <laughs> he knows I'm an idiot. Um, let's let's talk celebrities. <laughs> you know, with the, with the celebrity side of things now. Yeah. Sorry to pull you back into the the, the no. TV shows that are, but you've done them obviously in the UK. You've been yeah. down in Australia you now in America. What are these celebrities like? You know. The, the, we, we, we see the celebrity face a lot of the time. You get to see yeah. the weak spots, don't you? Yeah, I'll I tell you what. You know, when we're doing the show, I think it was about series three we brought celebrities in. I remember yeah. people saying, oh, we're bringing celebrities in. We're going, why? Yeah. Why are you doing that? that? That's stupid. We don't want to do that. I don't want pampered people around us who, you know, think there's something they're not. So we're kind of against against change, which we shouldn't be. Yeah. But obviously it was going to run, and it did run. But to be honest, mate, the first question I asked when these people turn up in front of us, I go, why are you here? Why are you here? Because straight away, everyone's got this perception of a, a celebrity. Got loads of money, very popular, got everything they want. It's not like that at all. No. Nothing like that Different at all. people doing a different job, that's all. Yeah, and the thing is actually, you know, they're in a worse predicament than most of us because everything they do mm. is highlighted. And there are so many people when you become a name, a popular name, who want to see you fall. Yeah. It's the truth. It's the, the bigger the shiny star you become, the more shadows you cast. Yeah, yeah. That's a fact. Yeah. You know, so for these people to turn up, so initially we're, we're a bit, why, why are you here? Just, mm. is this to improve your whatever? And it's not. But what I do love about it now, I think it's brilliant, is the fact that they can show their vulnerability. And with the celebrity stuff, that with the TV stuff, the show is about the people's journey, who they are, and if a celebrity that most celebrities do have a following their fans can look at that he or she and go wow yeah if he or she can talk about being abused yeah, yeah. or whatever then i can do it his phone just gone off that was my phone and he's, he's running that's the it. podcast 20 presses that's, that's so actually st start knocking them out <laughs> that's the um that's, right. that's the war office actually right. so Is it? yeah yeah get the chair above yeah. your head yeah that's um <laughs> War office. Do you want to fight? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'll tell yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, so for them to, uh, and that's that's what I love about the show, and the reason I love it so much and realise is, firstly, that person sat in front of that celebrity, we'll give them our advice, and we're not psychologists, we'll give them our advice based on a great experience that we've had or bad experience, you know, yeah. and they'll go, walk out that room, firstly, like they've dropped the Bergen, yeah. way off the back, yeah. taller, and thinking, wow, I feel good, I can go forward again. Vulnerability done, I can go forward. Yeah. The next day, our social media is DS, mm. goes mental. People going, mm. oh my God, I ain't going to say which one. A certain football player played for him. He can talk, I, I've been, and they'll come out and go, and go you've, you've just helped me through a dark space. And mm. I can show it right down to, this is fact, about a week and a half ago, I get a message, and it was a guy going to, I'm going to say Dover, to the cliffs to, to throw himself off. Yeah. Literally going there. Yeah. And he, he listened to the podcast, a podcast yeah, that I'd yeah, done, yeah. stopped, Listen to and, and goes, you've yeah. just helped me through a dark space. So, yeah, yeah. the fact that he yeah. does that. So, going back to the celebrities, I think it's a good thing that they're doing it. And also, when we first did it, it was for charity, it yeah. was for cancer. So, anything yeah, yeah. for any charity, you know, yeah. is worth doing in my yeah. eyes. Absolutely. But it, it's good to it, it's great now. I you know what it. I like about it is, is seeing you, you and the other DS. Yeah. Once the hood's off and uh, hood's back on and they're going out, you both look at each other and you make your own. Yeah. real comment about that yeah what you just uh, they've heard. started to show that now yeah, which yeah. is good yeah yeah because you do because, because again for people who don't know a lot about the show is we don't know anything about them the yeah. fact that middle room is nothing stays there's no script yeah. i have no idea what's going to come out that person's face I'd pass it no <laughs> no, you, you could gonna, definitely bluff your way through that was, gonna, that was going to be one of my questions actually you know with it's tv land so as a result there is going to be stuff that's scripted there has yeah. to be a plan because there has to be yeah. there's a storyline that you've yeah. got to adhere to but how much freedom is there uh you know have there, have there been any absolute nightmares people like to to hear the sort of gossip and stuff oh, have any real <clears throat> nightmare people on there i can think of one in particular um, um but, oh, uh, the end of the day be there can be as much of a nightmare as they want there's only going to be one winner, and that's yeah. going to be us. And if you want to come physical with us, yeah. you know, I don't care how big or strong you are. Yeah, you might be wanting to fight me, but you're fighting an octopus because yeah, there's yeah. three other blokes, sets of arms are going to come in and help me anyway. And I'm on the phone for him <laughs> yeah. as well. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, we, so, we do actually have something in common because we've all been involved in security because I bailiff Shearwater on a Friday. <laughs> <laughs> you got your badge. I've got my badge. I've got a badge. I was going to bring SRI. it in, but I thought... should have worn it, mate. Yeah. Blue ba the blue badge of courage. <laughs> it's it's no, it. bailiff in lakes. Oh, yeah. not, not yeah, SIA, yeah, yeah. Oh, not, not a dorm. No, no, I just oh, walked right. around the fishing lake, checked tur tickets. Have you got your permit? Yeah. Oh, right. Happy days, that's Anti -poaching, it. Anti-poaching then, really? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah good yeah, on you, mate. Exactly oh, yeah, I'd tell you what, it's tough in Wiltshire. There's a lot of there's a lot of serious. I'd feel intimidated if you was a bailiff. You wouldn't be on my lake if I was a bailiff. I've got my eye on you. Sorry, back to it. I forgot where we were. Sorry, yeah. sorry. I was just more intrigued in yeah. being you as a bailiff. Yeah, no, we, did, yeah, we, we, we were just ch chatting about um, you know people wanting to threaten you because uh, like the mindset goes. I mean, why, why, when you have got four very very serious yeah. special forces fellas that you know you're not dancers. You've been round the track. It's yeah. it absolutely isn't your first rodeo. Why does someone decide they want to punch you? I don't, to be honest, I don't think anybody's got quite that One far. One got close that I can think of. Boxer? Tony. Tony yeah. Bennett? No, yeah. I, I mean... He looked like he was, it was portrayed that he was... Maybe, really yeah. I mean, to Tony's, uh, to be honest, to be fair to Tony, Tony's had anger issues, I would say, and I hope yeah. you don't mind me saying that, you know. Yeah. He's brilliant fighter, great guy, great discipline, but Tony's a no-nonsense person. Yeah. If you push Tony to a point he's going to lash out a bit like me right? or you wanted to I think after the show it really really helped him he does yeah. brilliant things now with kids he's, he's got a charity or works with a charity called um, Knives Down Hands Up yeah, yeah. which is obviously yeah, very well yeah, needed brilliant. absolutely fantastic he does great things but no I mean Tony went to Flash yeah. but then again there's, there's still four of us who would have jumped in to contain yeah. it <laughs> how many is a big unit I don't know if we would have I think we'd have been alright but um, no thank god he didn't yeah. and he, he, yeah. he just needed to get to that point but, that but, boiling point and then realise okay there is another way out of this and I think he got to that point yeah yeah. You know, he was he was he was great to work with. I'll, I'll be honest with yeah. you. We but need to get him fishing. Actually, I think he's been. I think he's been actually. I think he went fishing. Yeah, he's been on he's probably been on another show. I think. I, I, I don't even see much of him. Yeah. Like, I've been watching him quite a lot. He's training like he's yeah. fighting. He's, I reckon he's going to come back. Yeah, no. this could be a first. Fair play, excellent. Yeah, but yeah. So so anybody that come for the wrong reasons, we're just going to break it down. Yeah. You know, it's it's just too easy. You know, you come with an ego and attitude. It's easy. 
but going back to what you're saying, there, there, there's no, there is no script to it. There's obviously the only thing that gets rehearsed is anything dangerous they're going to yeah. do, and we rehearse it as we would, yeah. not with the safety that they get. They get a little bit of extra safety. Yeah. So there's nothing we'd ask them to do that we uh, we couldn't do. Sorry, that? I've got a question. Yeah. How do you you just on the jungle? Yeah. How do you um, how do you choose the person that's going to do the demonstration, and do you get any resistance to it? As in the DS, yeah, no, I'll no, do, I mean, we all we we we'll, we we'll fight, in, we all fight, fight to do to it, do it. Yeah. and it's a, it's a case of now as I'm the chief instructor, yeah. sharing those tasks out. I want to do them all. Yeah. <laughs> Foxy wants to do them all. We all do. So it's a case of just share them around. And some people, prefer, I mean, I hate being the water stuff. It's not that you know yeah. I can't do it. I just yeah. don't like being in the water. I ain't a fish. Yeah. You know, I I've like to fish from the bank. Have you? Yeah. Oh, fair play. I'm a speedo. You'd love it. Maybe you could come in on the next show then. Maybe we could yeah. do, yeah. do what, swimming lessons. You could, yeah. mate, yeah. yeah. You could do the swimming test. Mm. I think that dropping backwards out of the helicopter at 10 yeah. metres is just, that for me would... Yeah, oh, and then that's just that's a bottle that's test. That's got no relevance to what we do in the SF unless you fall out, fall out the helicopter, yeah, yeah. of course, over <laughs> the sea. But yeah. it's a balls test. Yeah. It really is a bottle test to have trust in a, a procedure. And there many injuries? Because it looks to me that it's just yeah. got injury written all over it. We have had some injuries, not particularly yeah. from that. We've had a yeah. very few from that, but we've had, you know, we've abseiling. Yeah. yeah but absolutely. again, the oh, risk God. assessment... Yeah, we talked about that yeah. The risk yeah. assessment is... It's, it's all. It's like anything, mate. You can't cover every eventuality. Yeah. You do as much as you possibly can, and things do. You know, people fall off ladders. People yeah, fall off yeah. stairs. It, it's giving somebody a stop rope on a fast rope. Yeah. When they don't know what it is, yeah. I, I'd like to be in control of my own. To be honest, yeah. I mean, I've had a play with it. It's nice <laughs> to have your own rope, isn't it? Rather than have someone else holding onto it. <laughs> right. Exactly. Don't drop it too soon, because if you do, he's going to hit the wall. Don't do it too late, because he'll hit the floor. Yeah. <laughs> What's the margin? Second and a half in between. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I'm out go. of that one. I'll stand by and watch this one. Yeah. So, um, boys, so. We, we've we've more or less come to uh, the end of our time. I think it's been fantastic having you in. Um, again, the real reason why these guys are in have been to talk about mental health benefits and also, of course, Phoenix Heroes. Uh, so, um, obviously, Billy is an ambassador. Uh, Badger runs it. I am the uh, other ambassador as well. Um, if you know anybody that is serving or has served in the past then please just get them to look out for us uh just get them they may not need it now they might need it in the future at some stage but just get people to be aware that we are here you can find us anywhere and it's a very very serious organization um also if you're non-serving but you have any fishing kit then if you want to get rid of it we're really interested in it because one of the things we have is a tackle exchange and you can explain about that yeah. tackle exchange as yeah, well. Yeah, uh, tackle for heroes. Um, we, we launched it. It was a success right at the beginning. It's now um, nationwide receiving donations from all parts of the UK. Our community collects and distributes to veterans and armed forces personnel that are in need. Yep. So 100% of our donations get someone out fishing with us straight out to people yeah. that are fishing and basically if you're looking at that going you know what i quite like coming fishing you haven't got the kit you haven't got the money to buy it. don't worry we'll kit you out you get your starter kit if you like it you want to carry on give it us back and we'll kit you out with the next bit so uh, do keep in touch um gents before we disappear normally we ask people to bring in a little something for us and i think you've both got a little something haven't you so uh, who's going first um gary you reckon right right i've brought this in and it's obviously Phoenix Hills top, and it's got two signatures on there. I think one's you in it. Yeah. Billy, I'm late, Billy, and <laughs> Rob, you. So yeah. you can stick that in the frame. Fantastic. And that's uh, that'll look, look good without law problem. Lovely. That's okay. really good. Thank you ever so much. Thank you. Awesome. We shall get that on the wall with everything else. And there's the uh, SES logo and signed by myself and photograph for your wall. Awesome. Which is good to keep the kids away from the fire <laughs> and the flies out of the toilet <laughs> fantastic thank you ever so much gents for coming in that is absolutely brilliant it's been a pleasure um good luck with everything you're doing in the future what what you've been doing so far has been fantastic it's, it's really yeah, entertaining it. watching it and of course you know at some stage we're going to get out fishing actually yeah. when are we going to get out fishing let's uh as soon as you got time when we finish here we'll yeah. nail down a date fantastic we'll do it. Let's i get definitely want to get back out and uh, lovely yeah. Hey Rob, I just want to and say uh, thanks to everybody out there from all the yeah. uh, lakes that I've supported. There's all the people that give us donations, everyone that's supporting us now. Um, I will announce it now. Yep. Um, uh, we've been uh, granted land. Okay. In Colchester. Yep. 
and we're going to be um, support, uh, putting bids in for funding to build the first uh, veterans uh, base camp in uh, Colchester. Fantastic! That's um, awesome. So just watch. So watch you'll have out. a home base dropping centre that people. Oh can yeah, come it's going to be it's going to be awesome. Awesome. Any fishing there? No, it's no. just it's just land. Uh, no permission to but dig a lake. Can, uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll we'll sort something out with that. So another thing that we've got to talk about actually is a fundraising uh, event that we've got going on on the fourteenth, fifteenth, and sixteenth of July this year. It's going to be absolutely brilliant up at Linear Fisheries, and it is a celebrity pro am competition. Now the way the competition works is that we have got five teams, and each will have three pairs in it. One of that pair will be a superstar angler from one of the teams. The other one, well, that's open for you guys to bid into. We've got Nash. We've got, of course, ourselves, Outlaw Pro. We have got Dynamite. We've got Shimano, Total Carpa covering it. We're putting it on BT Sport. We're filming it there. Um, there will be other teams coming in as well. So keep your eye on the press. This is a great opportunity for, for you guys to come and bid, to join in this competition, be part of the team. You will be able to fish with somebody that is one of the big names in the trade and also raise money for a fantastic cause at the same time. So details will be out very, very soon if they're not out already. But, uh, yeah, that will be our gift to you. Yeah, Thank you ever so much for coming in. Uh, you know, we want to raise an excess of 10,000 quid for you to help you with, with some of the projects that you've got. No, that's brilliant. On. I can't thank you all enough. So thank you ever so much for your time. Thank you, Billy. Uh, I Pleasure. appreciate that you were incredibly busy. Uh, so thanks for taking time to come out and, and have a chat with us here. Badger, likewise to you. Ladies and gentlemen at home, what can we say? Brilliant cause, brilliant people. Uh, two absolute heroes. And I don't use the word hero lightly, but these gentlemen are absolute heroes, both in what they've done, what they do, and what they will continue to do. Um, that's it from the Outcast. It's been a brilliant one. We will, of course, have more. And until then, you know what to do. Click like, follow all the other bits and bobs on social media. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for listening to The Outcast, the podcast from Outlaw Pro, the ultimate angling experience. Remember to follow us on social media for updates and information on future guests. See you next time.